What's going on everybody? Metaverse Josh here. Today I got a special episode of Building the Metaverse for you all. On episode 4 we're going to be talking about building custom avatars for Spatial.io. This is a really cool feature that's coming up in Spatial that I'm really excited about. Um, as of making this video it's going to be live next week but I'm gonna go ahead and show you at least in the sandbox how to build your avatar adding your Spatial Avatar component and at least getting it into the sandbox that you can get it tested for next week's go live. So let's get started. First, we need a model. So I already have a model that I want to use. I'm going to use my old alt space model, but for you, if you want to look for one, there's probably some on Sketchfab that you might like. Um, I like Spider-Man, just doing a quick search for that. Uh, you can see there's a few different models. You can just search for the ones that are downloadable using that filter. Um, you'll want to prefer one that's uh, FBX format and in a T pose or an A pose if possible. Um, so going through these really quickly, it seems like I'm sure I can find one. There's an FBX model. It's already rigged, it seems. Um, and so I could use that. But I'm going to use a model that I already have. And so um, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and open up Unity Hub. If you don't have Unity Hub and Unity installed, check out the first episode of Building the Metaverse. It'll show you how to do that. We're just going to open and I'm going to go ahead and move. I've got a, a copy of the spatial template in my documents folder here and I'm just going to go ahead and paste that into my project folder for avatars. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename this folder uh, because it looks like the way that it currently works you can actually use one project for multiple avatars so once we open up this template folder for the first time it's probably going to take a little longer the first time to open this than it normally would so we're just going to skip forward here three days later okay once we're loaded into unity if you get a message that says that there's a new version of the spatial sdk go ahead and grab that just hit yes and it's going to go ahead and download and let you know when it's done and then re-import that uh, SDK into your project. So for me, uh, since I already had this downloaded, I didn't get the latest version so it went ahead and updated for me. Um, if you do have the latest version, it may not give you that message. That's fine. Um, once we're here, we want to go ahead and import our model. So what I like to do is create a folder within our project here and I'm just going to name this um, avatars and inside of there, I'm going to create a folder and I'm just going to name it Metaverse Josh because my model is actually me from Altspace. So inside of my model folder here, I have two objects. One is going to be my texture and one is going to be my, uh, my model. And so most things you get from Sketchfab or wherever else are going to be at least a, a model, hopefully FBX. Uh, and then you've got, I've got one texture for my model here. You may have several. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click our model here and we're going to click the rig tab and we're going to change animation type from generic to humanoid. This is important because your spatial avatar is not going to work unless it is a rigged humanoid model. Um, so we have our humanoid model in there. We've clicked it. Uh, we change the animation type to humanoid. Make sure your avatar definition is also create from this model and then hit apply. Now what this is going to do is it's going to create an avatar for your rigged model that it hopefully rigged from this point uh, and you can start to work with it. If your model did not rig from these steps, there's a couple of things that we can do. So if you do have a rigged model already or it did work, then you can go ahead and skip to the next part of the video. If not, what I'm going to show you here is a website called Mixamo and I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to sign into Mixamo. Uh, you can sign on with a Google account or a Microsoft account, I believe. It's a it's an Adobe service, and they have tons of uh, free animations and characters and things that you can download. But they also have a really cool um, rigging type of uh, uh, function here. And so one of the things you can do is you can upload your model to Mixamo, and it will rig the model automatically for you. And so sometimes it doesn't automatically do it. Uh, you do have to sometimes uh, adjust where the, uh, where the joint parts are. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that uh, in just a minute. But more than likely, my model is going to work, so I won't be able to show you here. 
um, but if, if it doesn't work, it'll give you some little circular disc type objects that you would move onto the different parts of the body of your avatar. And once you get done with that part, you'll be here. And so once the body is rigged, you'll be able to play around with any of the animations uh, that are in here. Uh, but we don't really need animations for the avatar model. We just need it to be rigged. So now that it's rigged, you'll want to go to download. Make sure it's FBX binary and, and click download. Um, I already have my model rigged, so I, I don't need this one. But uh, if your model did, in fact, not get rigged from Mixamo, if something happened uh, and it didn't like that model uh, and it couldn't do it for you automatically, there's one other option that you can use. There's a free program called AccuRig, and I'll put a link in the description for that one as well. Um, if, if you need to, you can use this. Um, you do the same thing, you just upload your model, but this time it's going to a little bit it's going to be a little bit more uh, involved. And so by that I mean you're going to have to uh, line your model up in here. Where's the center of your model? Um, it's really good to have a T-pose or A-pose symmetrical model for this. Uh, and then I'll show you why. Um, and here's the reason. You want to click force symmetry here if you have a, a symmetrical model. And this will automatically, when we go to rig the body, move both left and right points at the same time. And I'll show you why that's important so here you can see there's a left and right side if I hover over the point you'll see where on the body on this right window here that I need to place it so it looks like it did a pretty good job uh, for me I might have to move a few of these but you can see if the body is symmetric then I can move one point and it'll actually adjust both for me at the same time so that actually makes things a lot easier um, once you get done rigging the body, it's going to ask you how many fingers that your model has. If you have zero or if you have less than five, you can choose that here. My model has five, so I'm just going to leave that there. Um, sometimes it automatically does this well, sometimes it doesn't. And so if the hands on your model are extended and easily seen by the program, a lot of time you won't even have to do anything here, uh, but you may have to make some slight adjustments. So for me, uh, it looks like at least within this model, it ends up rigging it pretty well here. So I don't have to make really any adjustments, maybe some slight adjustments on this finger here. Um, but that looks pretty good. Um, so we'll leave that and we'll finalize the character. And then what we end up with is a completely rigged character. Um, I can even test out some of the animations on the character right here from within AccuRig. And when we're done, you'll just want to export that as a Unity compatible FBX model. So as you can see, my character, it, I can pose it in a few different ways. There's some different animations that um, I can test here. And so it's rigged and ready to go. So I'm going to hit export. I'm going to export as F FBX. I'm going to change this to Unity and hit export. And then I can save it somewhere. So again, I don't need to do that because my model is already rigged. But in case that you needed to rig your model because uh, Unity didn't work for you, that's how you would do it. Now once we're back in Unity with the rigged model, um, we're going to be here with the avatar assigned to our model. Um, the next thing we'll want to do is we'll go to materials here. We'll extract the materials and I'm just going to replace them in the same folder as my model. So now I have two materials. One doesn't have a texture. That's okay though. Um, I've got my texture and I've got my model. Now I'm going to place the model into my hierarchy here and it's going to place that into the center of my scene and so now I just want to take a look at the model uh, in the scene and as you can see it's already slightly textured for me I'm missing a texture here but that's okay like I said because we're going to want to make some edits so now that your model is rigged and in the scene you're going to want to right click it hit prefab and then unpack that's going to let you change some of this stuff so the first thing we want to do uh, at least for me, is I'm going to get rid of these limbs because my alt space model, uh, I prefer it to look like the original VR model with no arms and legs, so I'm doing that. Uh, but it's still rigged in those spots where it would have arms and legs, so it'll still work. This is just a visual thing. Um, and so now I have my model in there. I'm going to do a couple of things to it, though. Uh, first of all, I don't really want it to look this shiny, so I'm just going to go to the material that I'm using here and I'm going to change the smoothness and just pull that all the way down. Uh, Unity likes to place this sort of 50% uh, 
uh, smoothness on it by default. So I'm just going to take that down. That looks a little bit more like what I'm, I'm wanting here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the root of the model and I'm going to make it slightly bigger, 1.2 uh, all the way across the board. And that just makes the model slightly bigger and you can change, uh, you can make it smaller or bigger here. That's up to you. So now that I've got my avatar kind of the way that I want it to look like, I'm going to select the top game object here, the root game object of my avatar, and I'm going to add the spatial avatar component. And once you do that, you're ready to create your prefab. So in order to create a prefab, we do just like we did in a pretty previous video, and we'll drag the root game object of our avatar into our project folder here. So now we have a prefab. Last, what we'll want to do is we'll come to our settings here for our spatial toolkit. And we want to change a few things. I like to move this window into the right side here. If you just grab the tab and move it next to the inspector tab, you can actually just move that to the right side. Um, so the first thing we'll want to do is we're going to change this to avatar under create new and we'll hit create. And what that's going to do is create a new active package of the avatar type with a default name of avatar underscore one. So we're going to change that. I'm naming mine metaverse Josh. You can name yours, whatever you'd like. Um, the SKU will be assigned to your package whenever you upload it. Right now that's not possible at the time of making this video, um, but next week or whenever you're watching this, if it's after the avatars have went live, hopefully you'll have a publish button and when you can do that, it'll actually assign a SKU to it for you. Uh, for now, all we can do is test active package in the sandbox, so that's what we're going to do. Um, next, we're going to go to prefab. Right now it's set to none. You can either select the small box to the right and select your prefab that you had earlier, or you can simply drag, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to deselect that. You can simply drag your prefab into that slot. Next, you'll want to select whether your usage context is global or ecosystem. Now, I'm going to explain a little bit about what that is. The global avatar is a avatar that can be used in all spaces in spatial, and the way I understand it is the ecosystem is uh, avatar is where you can only use those in worlds that you create. Um, and so the differences between the limitations there, um, the global avatar has to have no more than four sub meshes. And, uh, and I believe uh, there are some other limitations, but that's one of the main ones that I kind of ran into. Um, and so when selecting this, just keep that in mind. My avatar seems to be fine as a global one. If you can't do that because of the limitations, then just select the ecosystem for now. Uh, and the last thing you'll want to do is upload a thumbnail for this. So what I like to do is just use a snipping tool. So if you have Windows, you can just search for snipping tool, um, select new, just draw a box around the character, and then save this uh, somewhere within your project folder. So I'm just going to put that in there with the rest um, of, the, uh, of the files. And I'm going to select that from here. And so I just named that... Uh, uh, capture and now I have everything in here and so once I have named my package I've got my prefab in the field here I've selected the usage context that I want to use and I also have my thumbnail selected here now I'm ready to test now before I hit the test active package button I need to save my project so I'm gonna go over here to files I'm gonna hit save and I'm going to save my scene. I'm actually going to make a new folder to keep this clean. Call it scenes. And I'm going to save my scene since it's got my Metaverse Josh character. I'm just going to name it Josh. You can name it whatever you'd like. Uh, now we're going to go to Test Active Package and hit Continue. At this point, if you had any issues with your avatar, it would let you know here. Some of the common issues that I've seen is uh, your texture file can be no larger than 1024 by 1024 resolution. So if you have something larger than that, you may need to scale it down using Photoshop or whatever other program you might have. Um, some other issues I've seen is uh, if you're trying to upload an avatar into the global usage context and it has over four sub meshes, you won't be able to do that. Um, but again, if you select ecosystem context there, you will be able to upload that. Now here we are loading into the sandbox. I'm going to be able to test my avatar here. Uh, just walking around, jumping, or even testing out some of the spatial dance animations here. 
Um, as you can see, my, my raid character is working fine here. Uh, and I'm going to be able to use this whenever the custom avatars go live as a global avatar. Um, and if you're not able to use this global again, you might have to select ecosystem, but you'll at least be able to use it in the worlds that you create for yourself. Um, and so that was it. That's as easy as it is to upload your own avatar into Spatial next week. I cannot wait to see what everybody comes up with. Again, thanks guys for watching. This has been Metaverse Josh with another episode of Building the Metaverse. Until next time, everybody, thanks for watching.